Hello folks, I'm your host, Megan Lynch, and welcome to Extreme Art Television, a Society of Unique Artists production. EAT is an all-art news program that highlights unique and extreme artists and art forms from all over the world. Today, EAT has compiled some very intriguing and entertaining unique art talents just for you. Due to the mainly ephemeral nature of their artwork, these largely underrepresented artists tend to fly under the radar, but are now beginning to gain notoriety within the mainstream art world. Among the amazing art forms we bring to you today are body painting, coffee art, bicycle ballet, and a few exciting others. We will also feature some of the best 3D street painting ever created. Originating in 16th century Italy, the Italian street painters known as Madonari for their recreations of the Madonna were nomadic artists. They traveled from town to town in search of festivals where they could make a living from their pavement paintings. In modern times, due to laws in many states prohibiting writing or drawing on public property, 3D chalk art is mainly only seen during festivals or at promotional corporate events. This art form requires much skill, practice, and hard work to master. California-based chalk artist Tracy Lee Stum is respected the world over as the leading female street painter. She began street painting in 1998 at the Santa Barbara Modinari Festival. She holds the Guinness World Record for the largest chalk painting ever created by an individual, and I can tell you that her works are simply mind-boggling. When we come back, we'll meet Tracy and see some of her incredible work. So don't go away. Welcome back to Extreme Art Television. In 2013, EAT had the privilege of meeting up with world-renowned 3D street painter Tracy Lee Stum on the East Coast. Along with the Atlantic City Alliance, Tracy compiled a group of 14 leading international street painters for the Do AC 3D Chalk Painting Festival in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Let's take a peek at this exciting event. An 11 Unique Art Award winner, Miss Tracy Lee Stum. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, thank you so much for being with us today and taking a break from your work. Thank you. No, it's my pleasure. Happy to be here. As I, I look behind me at all the art going on, it's amazing. It's truly breathtaking and mind boggling. Great. Uh, so that's, that's the reaction we want <laughs> from people. The point. <laughs> so tell me all about how this came to be and how you came to be the curator. Well, this has been a project that's been about two years in the making, and originally the Atlantic City Alliance, which is a terrific organization here in Atlantic City, they promote uh, public art and public art events, uh, came to me and asked me if I'd want to do a large project, uh, potentially a Guinness World Record project, at Boardwalk Hall. And I said, that sounds great, let's start planning. So we got into the initial planning phases of that and realized that the schedule at Boardwalk Hall was not going to accommodate our needs for that. So the project kind of morphed and changed and we wound up with a traditional street painting um, format, except uh, we decided to open it up to 3D art specifically. So it's a 3D street art uh, festival and um, you know, I just kind of naturally went in from project management in my own business, in my own street painting career, to um, how to make this festival be supportive for the community and for the artists involved.
remarkable, Tracy. You are truly incredible. Keep up the good work. Next, we highlight another amazing artist that discovered his talent by accident while working as a barista at a hotel. Here is coffee artist Michael Breach. Like when I pull a shot and I put it into a cup and I see the different colors swirling around, that's like my palette. I can actually see it happening. You know, I can see the darker spots, the lighter spots. Coffee is my medium. People always ask, like, do you do art? Do you like paint? Do you draw? And I say, no, coffee is my medium. The whole thing kind of is a joke because they dissipate after a while because it's going to be gone in like three minutes. I kind of want to be like Willy Wonka with coffee. You know, make it something interesting and fun for people. Take the pretentiousness out of it. Take the seriousness out of it. It actually sprouted from a unique situation, which is me working in the back of this hotel with an espresso machine and all this equipment to myself for hours and hours and hours. And I kind of realized I could sort of manipulate the milk and the coffee. When I started doing it, I would come up with just faces at first, and then people got really excited about it. It was just like the beginning of the latte art, where I was like, oh, I can't draw a face in coffee, and then I tried to, and it actually worked out. Almost every couple weeks, I come up with a new technique, or I find out something different that I can do. And I actually started doing this a long time ago, and I took a break from doing it for like five or six months. And my like self-deprecating like you know artisticness, I was just like, these aren't good enough yet. I don't want to. I don't want to do this yet. I'm gonna stop and practice and get better at it before I post anymore. So I had a Tumblr for a while, and I stopped posting for like months. I started showing the pictures around to people, and they got really excited about it. So I kind of started doing it again and then practicing. But I wanted to get better at it before I like put myself out there and did it. This doesn't last forever. I think that's what makes it special. You know, that's what makes it something more personal to me. I'd like to now introduce you to Erica DiGiulio, my lovely co-anchor for our new segment, Eat Digest, an extension of extreme art television, which will feature mainstream contemporary and fine art news. Thank you, Megan. I'm very excited to be here and to be able to bring important information from the art world to our EAT viewers. So let's get started. Good evening, EAT viewers. I'm Erica DiGiulio, and I'm pleased to welcome you to EAT Digest, a new segment of extreme art television that will keep you informed on exciting news in the mainstream art world. Over the past few months, EAT was invited to witness several newsworthy art events taking place within New York City. On this first episode of EAT Digest, we will feature the inaugural ribbon cutting ceremony of the Whitney Museum's new home, the New York Botanical Garden Exhibition Frida Kahlo, Art, Garden, Life, and later we take a peek at I Like It Like This, a celebration of contemporary black American artists, presented by Sotheby's S2 Gallery in collaboration with Grammy-winning hip-hop artist Drake. And we will also head down to Manhattan's Union Square to experience the 10th anniversary performance and celebration of Fuerza Bruta, a thrilling new concept in interactive theater. We have lots to talk about today, so let's dive right in. Back in March, Eats Sarah Sanders visited the Armory Show at New York's Pier 92. Let's go to Sarah to find out more about this high profile art event. Hey there, Eat viewers. I'm Sarah Sanders reporting for Eat Digest from the Armory Show at New York City's Pier 92. Now, 2015 marks the 16th consecutive year for this very important international modern art fair. And the Armory Show is the main event during Armory Arts Week, which takes place annually in March. It features a selection from some of the most notable art galleries from around the world, showcasing some of the most important modern contemporary artists and artworks. Now, I am a huge fan of modern art, and this is my first year at the event, so I am very excited to see what it's all about.
how thrilling to be able to see the artworks of so many iconic artists actually for sale. If you missed the fair this year, you can plan to see the event next year at the same location. Next, Eat was invited to the media preview and ribbon cutting ceremony for the opening of the Whitney Museum's new home in the Meatpacking District. This was a one week celebration that featured VIP parties and a media day, which culminated with a special ribbon cutting ceremony attended by US First Lady Michelle Obama and New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. Our very own Eat anchor, Megan Lynch, was on location and spoke with museum director Adam Weinberg and Chief Curator Donna DeSalvo. The Whitney Museum had been uptown for 50 years on Madison Avenue and great building up on Madison Avenue but a bit on the small side and we needed a little bit more space. When we, when we were there uptown, we opened there in 66, um, we had 2,000 works of art. Today we have 22,000 works of art. Uh, it was an incredible experience because there's nothing better than looking at art, and especially art you haven't seen before. And we worked with a great team of people and looked at many, many works in the collection debated them, analyzed them, and uh, so it was incredible to work with them on the selection and also then on installing them in the galleries. This is an extraordinary day for New York City. It's a privilege for me to, to be here today. Two, three. mecca of the art world, but just in case, we need to make it clearer. This museum does it. Now, Frida Kahlo is an iconic Mexican painter who was active during the first half of the 20th century. And like many other artists, she led a rather difficult life and experienced a very troubled marriage to another very famous Mexican painter. Diego Rivera. Salma Hayek played her in the biographical movie of her life called simply Frida. Her famous home on the outskirts of Mexico City, La Casa Azul, or the Blue House, where she was born, lived, and painted throughout her entire life, is now the subject of a new exhibition titled Frida Kahlo, Art, Garden, Life, at the New York Botanical Garden in the Bronx. Through the reimagining of the Blue House with its famed garden and studio, this exciting new exhibition examines Frida's keen appreciation for the beauty and variety of the natural world, while also featuring a very rare display of more than a dozen of her original paintings and works on paper. Eat was privileged to be one of the first to experience this spectacular new exhibition, which featured a very special performance by the Villalobos brothers.
what a delightful exhibition and such a sensational performance by the Villalobos brothers. Not too long ago, our field reporter Sarah Maliski went on location at Sotheby's S2 Gallery to preview I Like It Like This, a new collaborative exhibition with Grammy-winning artist Drake, featuring the work of contemporary black American artists. I Like It Like This highlighted artwork by such iconic painters like Jean-Michel Basquiat, Romari Bearden, Kehinde Wiley, and many, many others. The exhibition also provided an interactive experience for visitors by allowing them to listen to music curated by Drake with Beats by Dre headphones at various listening stations throughout the gallery. Let's take a peek. Hey guys, Sarah Maliski here with Extreme Art Television. Today we're at Sotheby's S2 Gallery to preview I Like It Like This, a new exhibition featuring the works of contemporary Black American artists with musical curation by platinum-selling musician Drake. information about what this gallery is all about. Sure, this is, um, so you're in S2, which is the contemporary private cell gallery of Sotheby's. And what we like to do here is sort of a different take on contemporary art. So you've got the sort of auction side of things, and then this is an experimental space for us, where we've done shows with Vito Schnabel, we've done, you know, um, shows on single artists such as Basquiat or um, Francois Claude Lalanne, where we sort of turn the gallery into a garden. So we, we like to have fun here. Definitely. So what I've noticed is the musical curation by Drake, who is a multi-million dollar selling artist. So would you mind giving us a little info as to why you chose Drake? Sure. I think we really wanted to do a show about um, black American artists sort of from the 30s till today. And we were really interested in the dialogue between music and art. Um, and we thought it'd be important to go to one of the sort of primary tastemakers of, you know, current American music. Like Sarah really had a lot of fun. Eat Digest was invited to the 10th anniversary performance and celebration of Fuerza Bruta, a postmodern off-Broadway theater show that originated in Argentina and was created by Dickie James. The performance is nothing like you would expect. It's a sensational, physical, and interactive experience. I'm here with Dickie James. I can feel the energy buzzing off you right now. How are you feeling? Well, so it's very exciting to do something new. We are adding a new scene in the show. So after seven years in New York, I am feeling like, you know, very excited. So what's the inspiration behind the show for you? Well, our show is, is like a celebration. It's like carnival. It's like a big, big party. It's, it's all action everywhere, on the roof, on the walls. You are inside the, the show, there is no stage, there is no seats. So it's like a big celebration. If you watch the show, you can tell that there are so many different like levels of, of activity that we're required to do. So there's drumming and there's singing, there's dancing, there's harness and aerial work. And we go through a series of emotions. So. Really, you just have to be in the moment, potentially an actor, dancer, acrobat, those are all wonderful things, and we just have to stay conditioned. I use ideas to do the show. I, it's more like a, like a physical impulse. It is not a, a, an intellectual show. I am very physical, like the show is very physical.
years is, I think it's, it was so fast. <laughs> it seems a lot of time, but it was very fast. Um, and we are, we, are, we are in a very good moment. Internationally, we are in a very good moment. We are, we are going to China, we just come from Japan. We have a, an European tour, a South American tour, all at the same time. Wild. Take it from me, this show is literally off the hook. I've never seen anything like it. I urge you to go out and experience it for yourself. Well, that's it for tonight's Eat Digest segment. Thank you for joining me. I'm Erica DiGiulio, and I look forward to seeing you again next time on Eat Digest. I now send you back to Megan Lynch for the rest of the show. Thanks, Erica. Unfortunately, our time is almost over. Thank you so much for watching Extreme Art Television tonight. I'm your host, Megan Lynch, and please don't miss our next episode. You can find out any information about our show by visiting Society of Unique Artists on the web, suartists.org. I leave you with a spectacular performance by the sensational dance group, Illuminate. <laughs>
Welcome to Society of Unique Artists Piano Donation Program. Founded in 2009, the program has been a resourceful tool for people wanting to get rid of their old pianos. It's easy, reliable, and serves a great purpose by helping to support Society of Unique Artists' nonprofit mission. Check out our website, www.suartists.org, to learn more about our organization. Our piano program, which is active in all 50 states, is considered one of the best and most convenient programs in the country. 